Hey folks, in this video I'm going to take you for another ride in my homemade electric buggy and talk about some of the issues that I've been having with it which have kept me from publishing the plans and what I'm doing to resolve them. The first problem is one that I've already talked about with some of you a few times and that's the rear suspension. Notice in the picture that the shocks were originally set at a sharp angle to keep the mount small and point the load directly through the bracing in the chassis and to the suspension on the opposite side. Because the shock becomes less effective the more it's angled from 90 degrees relative to the control arms at full compression, I planned on using stiffer springs than normal to compensate. When I built this machine I was on a strict budget and spending thousands of dollars on shocks wasn't going to happen, so I resorted to cheap eBay coilover shocks for the rear suspension that turned out to have a much lower spring rate than advertised, and the suspension was really soft as a result. After adding my weight, the sag took up at least half of the shock's travel distance and made the ground clearance in the back almost an inch lower than the front. The buggy bottomed out in the trails quite a few times during the first test drive, so stiffening the suspension and raising the back of the buggy became a priority, and I did that by extending the shock mounts on the chassis by 3 inches in order to stand the shocks up another 15 degrees. This made them a lot stiffer and raised the back of the buggy by almost 2 inches, so there's good clearance now and it has a more aggressive stance. In the video, you'll notice that I switch back and forth from showing the BMS display to the speedometer. I tried to get both to show in a split screen on my phone, but the apps kept crashing. The fastest speed that I've reached in the buggy is around 92-95 km an hour, but that was only once on the asphalt just to see what it would top out at. I do live in the country where ATVs are almost daily commuters for most people, but this is still an open wheel off-road buggy so it's a bit more dangerous than most and I don't mess around on the road when I need to sneak it out to the track, which is where I'm heading to now. It's just a small track that I've been beating down in a field with the buggy on my father's property, but I have it all to myself anytime I want. My father and I own all of the land between his place and mine, and we do have an ATV trail connecting them through the woods that I could use to drive the buggy back and forth, but it hasn't been used in so long that it's grown up with bushes and blocked by fallen trees. I brought the drone with me to give you guys a bird's eye view of the track as it is now, and what I intend to do in the near future which is marked by the blue line. There's actually two fields on this portion of the property that I can take advantage of, but they're separated by a small brook. 
We've buried quite a few trucks and tractors in it trying to cross it over the years when we used to farm, so eventually we put a culvert in the middle of them. But it's since become overgrown with trees and needs to be cleared, and I'll need to install a culvert in the other end on the left of your screen where I'm hoping to make a long section in the track that I can get some speed on. As you'll see from the speedometer, I can only get the buggy up to around 35 kilometers an hour in the area that I'm currently driving in. But it's a good spot for driving a machine like this, so my goal with testing here is to find a happy medium between top speed and torque. I don't need or care to reach highway speeds, but I do want to spin more dirt around the corners, which brings me to the next problem. The current setup has the buggy lacking in torque, and it's admittedly hard to brake traction and spin the wide knobby tires anywhere other than in a gravel pit, especially in this tall grass where it just seems to grip the treads like Velcro. It's a combination of things from the gear ratio between the motor and the differential to the motor wanting to pull more current than what the controller can provide, and using a lower voltage system than what I could be using. Current is proportional to torque, and voltage is proportional to speed. In other words, more voltage produces more speed, which I could use to convert to torque with a higher gear ratio, without sacrificing the top speed that I have now. It would also lower the current demand to achieve the same power. The nominal voltage of the battery that I'm using is 102.4 volts, but the ME1616 motor can handle up to 144 volts normal, and with a voltage constant of 0.26 volts per RPM, that would mean an additional 1600 RPM to play with. The speed controller that I'm using is the KLS8080 IPS from Kelly Controller, rated for 96 volts nominal and 600 amps peak. At the time, this was the most powerful controller that I could find to match with the ME1616, but one of the first things that I had to do when setting it up was lower the motor current setting because an overcurrent error was constantly causing the controller to cut power every time I used just a moderate amount of throttle. It even tripped when trying to reverse too fast. After coordinating with tech support at Kelly and adjusting the current, torque, speed, and map settings in the controller, we finally got it to stop cutting power so often. But it's still an issue if I try to use full throttle, especially after the controller starts getting hot. When it does get hot, I can't run it hard for more than a minute at a time before it shuts down and needs to cool off. I've tried monitoring exactly how much current I'm using through the BMS, but the app only measures the current every 5 seconds, so it's almost impossible to get a peak reading before the controller cuts power 2 or 3 seconds after giving it full throttle. To date, I haven't seen more than 295 amps. I know the motor's pulling at least twice that amount, but I won't know exactly until I set up a proper amateur to measure it. Kelly now makes more powerful controllers that can handle up to 1000 amps. I'm considering upgrading to a 700 or 900 amp in the future to give me a bit more wiggle room for avoiding overcurrent problems and generating less heat, but for now I'm going to try a few cheaper mods to see if I can make the controller run cooler and get more torque at the wheels without increasing the current demand. To do this, I'm going to incorporate a liquid-cooled aluminum heatsink with the controller, and I'm changing the gear ratio between the motor and the differential from 5 to 1 to 7.25 to 1. This should add close to another 200 foot-pounds of torque at the wheels, and make a noticeable difference when throttling higher to accelerate, or brake traction to spin the wheels. Kelly also claims that incorporating liquid cooling with their controllers should increase the continuous current to almost 60% of their rated peak current. And if it's true, that would be a big help, but there's only one way to find out. My theory is that increasing the torque mechanically should require less throttle to achieve what I want and lighten the load on the controller which would otherwise need to generate the same torque with high current, and hopefully that will stop the overcurrent protection issue. Unfortunately, changing the gear ratio will lower the top speed to around 70 km an hour, but I don't think I'll ever reach that speed here, and if I ever prove myself wrong, then I can always increase the battery voltage to add that extra 1600 RPM into the mix and bring the top speed back up to where it was. Unfortunately, after about 10 minutes of fun on this particular day, it was cut short by a mechanical failure. Luckily, I had a GoPro pointed in the right direction when it happened.
As you can see, the joint in the CV axle came apart as it came around that corner and the weight shifted to the right side. I thought I'd wrecked the axle altogether, but after I got it back to the shop and opened the boot, I saw that the snap ring holding the joint together just popped out of place. It might not have been seated properly when I first installed them, but I figured the axles are probably just too short now that I've added a couple inches of ground clearance. So I went back to the track to find out. If the joint came apart again, then I'd know for sure that I need to replace the axles with longer ones. Right now I'm only accelerating with barely more than half throttle, which works out to around 200 to 250 amps, and again I'm keeping it under the posted speed limit. The acceleration would be pretty decent if the controller wouldn't cut out 2 or 3 seconds after giving it full throttle, but I'll show you what I mean when I get to the track.
Now that I switch back to the BMS display, pay attention to the current as I go around this first corner. I gave it full throttle to try to spin the wheels and the BMS registered 100 amps just before I did that, but the controller cut power before it had a chance to show peak current. And sure enough, I didn't even get one lap in before the CV joint came loose again. I definitely think the axles are too short now, so that'll be added to the list of things to change in the next couple of weeks. I have a new sprocket and chain on the way to increase the gear ratio, and I think I'll contact Kelly about a heat sink so I can get all of the changes done at once and compare the performance in the next video on this project. But first, we're going to get back to working on the electric motorcycle with some new gear that I've been waiting for since the beginning of summer. Since it's a simple fix, I just put the joint back together in the field and drove the buggy back home. But I wanted to show the controller cutting power one more time as I left. Notice the power died only a few seconds after giving it full throttle. There's just too much delay for the app to be useful at measuring anything other than constant power. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments and by giving it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed if you want to see more videos like this. If you have any questions or helpful tips of any kind, feel free to post them below as well. Take care folks.